Tell us if you go on there one saw me phone by the throne job. That was today. It's August 21st, 2021, approaching August 22nd. And today, we're of course going to completely focus on um, her, now what's now Hurricane Henry as it approaches New England and the Northeast Coast. Well, before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather agriculture. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather agriculture. So let's begin by first taking a look at the current water vapor loop. And you see that we're seeing convection primarily on the southern side of the storm, but we're starting to see some convection now begin to wrap around the center circulation because you see earlier during the run you see that the convection was a lot more scattered but now in the later runs i'm starting to notice that the convection is now being more centered right around i'd say the center circulation and currently it's around 300 miles south southwest of montauk at this point and it's moving at I'd say an average speed for a tropical cyclone, but it's expected to slow down as it heads closer to New England where the steering currents will slow down as a result of this ridge that's going to build over um, eastern Canada. And it's going to slow things down um, as this heads further northward. But you see that um, while there is a good amount of dry air to towards the northern side, we're beginning to see the convection wrap around center circulation. And that's key, which could mean that we could see just a little bit more strengthening just before it crosses the 80 degree um, sea surface temperature border, which I'd say is right around this point. It's going to have a couple hours um, before it goes um, into the water that's below 80 degrees. And that's when the weakening stage should begin or at least um, or at least the, sl um, the slowing or strengthening should begin once it crosses um, the Gulf Stream pretty much when it goes over cooler waters that are right around the mid to lower 70 degree ranges which should weaken the storm just before landfall which is certainly good news however the bad news is that currently it seems like it's going to strengthen just a bit more before it heads over those cooler waters how much um, that still has yet to be seen but it doesn't it's not going to have a lot of time to strengthen over the warm waters because of course um, it's going to be um, it, um, there's only so much time it can move northward before um, it goes into the cooler water. So as a result, this will have a couple more hours strengthened before it begins its weakening stage. But um, moving forward, let's take, first take a look at the GFS model, see what it's forecasting with this storm. Um, let's first take a look at the precipitation map. And you see that the GFS model at this time expected this storm to be right around 984 millibars. However, the storm is a little bit weaker than that at this point. Um, it's at 900. 88 millibars and that could be key because um because if there were a stronger storm then we're more likely to see the storm head um head further westward because that would enhance the pinwheel effect between this upper level low and hen um Henri, like i was talking about um where if the pinwheel effect was strong then we would see the storm move further westward however since this storm might be weaker than expected we could expect maybe a more eastward track to where the extreme eastern tip of Long Island and right around the border of Connecticut and Rhode Island could experience more impacts. However, if it does strengthen within the next couple of updates, then we could maybe see that change. Um, and it's certainly possible because it's still right around, it's still over more than warm enough water temperatures of the Gulf Stream at this time. But you see the GFS model in its run is taking a landfall somewhere um, in extreme eastern Connecticut, very close to Rhode Island and it makes landfall somewhere around Southampton right around the extreme tip of Long Island as the westward track that um, some were worried about in New York City doesn't seem um, l very likely at this point um, which is certainly good news for those around New York City and New Jersey however um, for those in New England um, more towards Massachusetts and Rhode Island that may not be good news because that means a um, the storm would move closer to you guys. So it seems like the more eastward track is more likely where it makes sandfall somewhere in Long Island and Connecticut at this point. The H wharf agrees with it. Um, if we were to take a look at the H wharf model at this time, um, you're going to see it's going to take Henri towards the eastern track where it makes a landfall somewhere between the border of actually it is taking a landfall towards Rhode Island which is the extreme eastern track but the European model is still disagreeing and it's taking a much more westward track where it takes it straight towards Long Island still 
um, and there's a, a still a pretty big array of possibilities, but most likely it'll make landfall somewhere in Long Island and Connecticut at this point. And pretty much impacts in those areas should be um, shouldn't be much different depending on which track. So make sure to prepare as if a category one is going to make landfall um, over that area. Now, take a look at the wind shear over the next several hours because that will be key in determining if this storm. Um, how much a storm will develop over the next several days because or at least the next several hours because if there's a lot of wind shear then this storm will never get vertically aligned to really strengthen to its max potential but you see that there's going to be a decent amount of wind shear but despite this the GFS model is still expecting it to strengthen so the wind shear won't be enough to really slow this storm down based off what the GFS model is saying and based off the convection we've been seeing strengthening should be likely I wouldn't be surprised if we've seen 80 to maybe an 85 mile per hour hurricane very soon within the next several updates um, um, the moisture won't be a problem with this storm. It's going to be under a fairly moist environment. If we were to take a look at the relative humidity and mid levels, you see that there's going to, it's going to be just very moist. We may see dry air on the back side um, as this upper level low comes closer, but for the most part, moist air shouldn't be a problem um, until maybe very late. But by that time, it's going to make landfall, so it's inevitably going to weaken. Now, taking a look at the current wind shear, you see that it's under an area where it's relatively light at this point but just to the west it's stronger you see but it's gonna uh, primarily avoid this stronger wind shear and stay in an area where um, conditions for tropical cyclone development should stay conducive as it's gonna be just east enough of this upper level low to be in an area where wind shear should be light now taking a look at the water temperatures which is going to be very key so I'd say the storm at this point, or at least the circulation, is right around this point. At um, and you see that um, be um, if you go um above the yellow, that's lower than 80 degrees. So it doesn't have much time over this warm water to develop much, which is certainly good news because if this warm water extended all the way to New England, then we could potentially maybe see a category two in our hands. But since this cold water is gonna be over this area, it's gonna act as sort of a barrier and prevent it from really strengthening into its peak potential, which is certainly good news. And it could even weaken it to a tropical storm before a landfall. So that's certainly good news, but whether this is an 85 mile per hour storm or maybe a 70 mile per hour storm at landfall i don't think the impacts will change very much so you guys all throughout new england and long island still need to prepare as if category one is going to make landfall somewhere in your area so do not underestimate the storm just because of it but the good news is that there will be cold air that will limit the strengthening of the storm before landfall and it should move relatively slow um, for a new england hurricane because simply new england hurricanes move very fast which um, um, and the reason why they're so strong is because they move so fast that it doesn't have a lot of time over the cold water to weaken before landfall. But in this case, the storm is going to move relatively slow up northward, so it should have some time to weaken just before landfall, which is definitely good news. Now, taking a look at um, the forecasted track from the National Hurricane Center, and um, you see that most likely it will make landfall somewhere between Connecticut, Rhode Island, um and long island at this point but and there is still a small margin of error but i don't think it's going to be huge enough to really change the impact so experience in certain areas so just prepare as if a category one is going to make landfall in your area and while the national hurricane center is currently expecting this to make landfall as a strong tropical storm around 70 miles per hour um there's still that possibility again that it could strengthen into hurricane status so do not underestimate it and um just because it might weaken to a tropical storm now take a look at the future cast radar which is another thing we need to look at when it comes to rainfall and when you should experience impacts you see that there's the eye of the storm there's Henri um pretty much just west of ocean city at this time if we were to continue move forward you should expect the first rain bands to hit long island i'd say in the very um in the dawn hours right around 5 to 6 a.m and you see that it should make landfall in long island i'd say somewhere midday on sunday right around 11 to 12 o'clock 
Um, that's where you should experience the heaviest rain in Long Island. And these rain bands could extend New York City as well, and even all the way north into Massachusetts well before I make landfall. And in terms of Connecticut, I'd say it should make landfall somewhere um, in the afternoon, middle afternoon, right around 3 to 4 p.m., where we should see the rain, heavy rainfall throughout Connecticut as flash flooding could be likely throughout the area. And you see that rain extends to New Jersey and New York City as well. So even though this, uh, the eye might be far, in fact, spread out far beyond. So do not underestimate the storm, if even if you're far beyond the eye, because we could still see rain um, far beyond the eye. Now, take a look at the rainfall forecast. This is concerning because we have a lot of areas where four to six inches of rain could be expected. And that's a huge anomaly, especially for the northeast. And even some areas where are expecting six to 10 inches of rain, which it would be just devastating if any area in the northeast experiences that. So you guys need to pre um, prepare for flooding as it could be a major problem for you guys all throughout the northeast. Now, um, take a look at the wind at the wind forecast over the next several hours because that's going to be another key thing with this storm so this is 2 a.m you see the winds will begin to increase right now long island um and this is um how the winds look like you see that in the center of circulation the sustained winds should be right around over 60 miles per hour especially and the eastern side of the storm will of course have the strongest winds and the biggest wind field will be on the eastern side so those in cape cod and right around the eastern half of the storm will need to pay close attention to this because the eastern side will have the biggest wind field and then moving forward into 8 a.m um, on Sunday, you see that um, the tip of Long Island should experience the same winds right around 36 miles per hour. So make sure to keep that in mind and the winds will continue for the next several hours. And here's the storm surge forecast, three to five feet all throughout the southern shore of New England, two to four right around Long Island and one to three in New Jersey, despite the storm being well off the coast. So make sure to keep that in mind. But yeah, guys, I guess that's it for this video. I'm gonna be reporting live in Connecticut, New Jersey tomorrow on um, the storm in New London, Connecticut, right around where the eye will make landfall. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna be strong because see strong storm surge flooding and it'll be quite an experience for me. So make sure to stay tuned for that as I should be reporting out on the field tomorrow during um, Hurricane Henri as it makes landfall right around Connecticut and Long Island. So make sure to keep that in mind. And I thank you guys for watching.